Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I have the privilege of introducing you to a very special person. She is special in every way, special to me, special in this world. Uh, her name is Elisa, and I've never called her Elisa, so hopefully I said that right. Her aliases are Allie, that's what I call her, and A-Y, A period, Y period. Her last name is Berthium. So Allie Berthium is a professional writer native Vermonter, practicing feminist, recovering middle child, wannabe superhero, I think she already is, and a mom who's pretty sure she's winging it. She holds an MFA in creative writing and is the lady boss owner of The Right Place, Right Time, her virtual boutique of ghostwriting services. Whether she's writing for herself or her clients, pst, Hint, I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm one of the lucky ones. <gasps> Berthium believes in emotionally compelling, honest, and powerful stories that are told in an authentic voice, come straight from the heart, and celebrate bravery, grit, and hope. If you can catch her not doing all the things, she's probably drinking maple lattes in a coffee shop, getting lost in a bookstore, or binge watching something on Netflix in her sweatpants while she eats ridiculous amounts of movie theater style popcorn. Welcome, Allie. Thank you for having me. Well, um, all of that sounded really good and wonderful. And just know, listeners, she's even better than that. <laughs> That's how good she is. I appreciate <laughs> she's that. She's fun and interesting and the best writer I have ever had the privilege of knowing. Oh, yeah. So Allie, tell everybody, I want you, to, I want them to learn from you about where you started um, when I first met you, how you dared to leap. So start way back then, what you were doing, how you were feeling and what helped you make that leap. Um, so, I, you know, I still remember exactly where I was when we talked on the phone the first time. Um, there was this little um, kind of coffee slash sandwich shop that was um, just like a hop, a skip and a jump from my office where I was working full time. And um, I remembered sneaking out, like taking like an early lunch break uh, to have this conversation with you. And I remember being nervous and excited uh, because I had just done the five day challenge, maybe a couple weeks prior to that. And I was just feeling so, um, oh my gosh, just like my vibe was like so high because I was like, I really think this is like the next step for me. And I'm going to be talking to like the woman and like, this could be like a make it or break it conversation in terms of, um, you know, what I do next and where I go next. And so I, I snuck out of the stage job to go to this coffee shop where I could talk to you on the phone. And I, found a spot on this, this low leather couch that wasn't very comfortable. And, um, you know, like just smells of coffee and like, just, you know, like wasping around in the air. And I was like, okay. And, um, and I think it was within just a couple minutes of like speaking <laughs> to you and you were like, uh, yeah, so I've only talked to you for like five minutes and I can already tell you that you're going to be amazing at doing this. So you should just like do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, what? Um, you know, and you were like, basically, I've seen how you write in your emails. I see how you filled out the homework, which far few people who actually attend the challenge actually do and then send. Um, right. And you were like, I like, well, I don't even know why you're doubting yourself. Like you're already there, you know? Um, and it was just what I, I needed to hear that in that moment in my, in my life. So if we, if we back it up, like the, the kind of the journey to that moment of, of having that phone call, um, that would have been the fall of 2000 and 
18, I think. So um, I was right in the middle of um, basically putting in official paperwork for a divorce. Um, mm. I was just barely, I think at that time, um, in an apartment for myself after living with my parents for several months in the midst of this separation. I was working this day job that um, had created a lot of challenge from the very beginning, um, <laughs> mostly from a personal integrity standpoint, because I knew when I interviewed for this job that it came with the responsibility of pulling a little red wagon, and I mean that legitimately, a red flyer wagon, um, on Fridays to get lunch for the company. Because this particular pizza place that everybody loved um, didn't deliver to the office that was like one block away, despite how many hundreds of dollars were spent you know, every single week, like getting pizza from this place. And that made me shudder um, when I was applying for this job. Um, but I was, I was, I had been grossly unhappy in the job that I was leaving to get this one. And I was looking at this going, okay, they're, they're an up and coming company in the area. Um, they're rumored to have incredible health benefits, amazing salaries to start out promise of raises. So as a new mom, because I had, I had an infant at that point in time that I was interviewing for this job as a new mom, these things were really important to me and, um, taking care of what I could, you know, for my position in the family was really important to me. And I was used to being the earner in the family that had the lower salary. I was used to being the one that didn't have the benefits, um, you know, that or didn't have better benefits. So I was all of a sudden I was looking at this job and I was like, okay, I was like, I can make more money in this job than I've made in any of these other jobs that I've tried since grad school. I have maybe room for advancement here, um, which will come with more pay. I have the chance to have amazing health benefits that actually makes me the person who holds the benefits that my family can, can come on. And so I was like, I guess for all of that, I can struggle through the professional integrity and my feminism to pull a little red wagon on Fridays to get some freaking pizza. <laughs> um, oh, despite my better judgment, that. I should have been I known then. <laughs> I should have known then. Um, so I get the job and I go in and it's promised to me this whole time that it's going to just be like this entry way of getting in the door for them to really understand what kind of skills I bring to the table. And then from there, they'll advance me when they find like the best place for me. Right. So I come in as an administrative assistant and I'm not thrilled by, by the, um, the assistant kind of language as I've been in assistant positions before, and they've often been undervalued, underappreciated um, positions. And so there's nothing wrong necessarily with the role. It's really more about the perspective, but I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's going to be great. Like it's a fresh start. It gets me out of this other job that I was dissatisfied in and it'll be fine. Um, What's unfortunate, however, is that while there were lots of prom promises that were made about where I would go and when it would happen, um, those promises were never kept. And so six months, another three months, another three months, you know, um, every time I would get promised that this would be the moment where they would decide, you know, what to do with me next, um, it, it always came down to, oh, sorry, but basically you know, in whatever way mm -hmm. they needed to, to deliver that news. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. I'm growing further unhappy with my role um, because I had thought that I had, I had already put in the time that they had told me I needed to put in before something else was going to happen. And at this point, I'm super tired of the red wagon. I'm um, very <laughs> tired of stocking seltzer in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> Here's the other, here was the other red flag. My very first day, I mean, there was lots of red flags now in hindsight, but my very first day, one of the, one of the guys that I was working with saw me in the kitchen and I was tidying it up and I was organizing the ridiculous amounts of beverages that were in this kitchen. And he asked me if I could put in a second row of pomegranate seltzer into the mini fridge. 
And I was looking at him like, is he being funny? This can't be like a, this can't be like a serious request, right? Like this is like, this is like really dry sense of humor and I'm just not getting it because it's my first day and I don't know anybody's personalities. And so, <laughs> and it's me and people, once they get to know me, I'm pretty much shoot from the hip. Like what you see is what you get. Right. Um, I love that about you. Rude. But like, I'm like, I'm sorry. Are you actually asking for a second row of pomegranate? Because there's a whole case of it in this other fridge that's like two feet away from the <laughs> from the smaller one. And he's like, well, yeah, because this is the one that I go to. Oh, you can't turn around and use the other one. <laughs> I'm like, you got to go to this one, this small little mini one, but you can't go to the big one because that's a whole other two feet. I was just like, what is wrong with this guy? Um, <laughs> but it was like stuff like that, like the entire time. And at first it was okay because I thought it was like, I'm new and I don't get these people. And then eventually I did get these people. And I was like, no, this is these people. <laughs> like, this is them. This is who I work with. Um, yeah. And so over time, I just got more dissatisfied. You know, you're not, they, they weren't fulfilling their, pro- their promises. I was doing these like kind of, um, I want to say menial tasks that, yeah. you know, that's the I word that came find, to me too. You know, I don't Menial. know if I value in. Um, and so I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I was just like, I'm, I'm this masters of fine arts, <laughs> formally trained writer who is pulling a red wagon to get pizza <laughs> and putting in second rows of pomegranate seltzer into the mini fridge. <laughs> what the hell am I doing? <laughs> like what the F? Um, so they obviously I'm, did not know your value at all not at they all. could not, not all. see your value um and it, w- it was only more frustrating that the person that was my direct supervisor I felt like I was basically doing their job um mm. while only getting paid for my job which yeah, you know, and they were like light years different in terms of like what w- what I needed to be capable of in order to perform the duties of this other job that wasn't technically mine so um so basically I'm in this new job it's not going well now I've now I've got um I'm going through some, some trouble at home um, because there was, there was some discomfort about working in a predominantly male oriented office. Um, and then I have a miscarriage and then my marriage falls apart. Mm. And then mm. um, I'm like, oh my gosh, the only thing now that's left is this job. And I'm like, all right, well, I better hold on to that. Cause it's like the only, it's the only steady or secure known thing that I have now. Every part, mm-hmm. every other part of my life has, has shifted, redirected, um, you know, and I'm like, all right, well, I got to hold on to this paycheck. Despite, despite however I feel about it, I need this paycheck, I need these benefits. And, and then because um, oftentimes the universe hands me multiple things at once. <laughs> um, I walk into a routine meeting with my boss and he basically tells me that I'm never getting promoted mm. and that the job that I've been promised is going to be um, a, an external job search is going to be performed <gasps> for, for the job that I'm promised, including not just a job that I was promised, but a job that I helped write the, the description for. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I was, I obviously in that moment had to come apart because I could not figure out what the heck was happening for one, but yes, two, I was like, I can't handle anything else. <laughs> like, like what is going on in life? Right. And, um, that was the beginning to searching for something else. That was the beginning where I was like, all right, the universe is seriously telling me that nothing in my life was truly aligned with where I wanted to go or who I wanted to be or what I wanted to do. And so it's basically like taking the tablecloth and going and like <laughs> hoping that the silverware and the, and the glassware is going to remain standing. <laughs> um, and so it was like, all right been here before you've done other weird shit to me before. So now I'm listening, I'm listening. What do you want me to do? And so I was like, all right, having this conversation to my higher power, you know, like, what do you want? Point me in the right direction. Um, and I started to search traditionally for jobs. I had one interview uh, with the women's studies department of a local college. And I was like, this is it. It's gotta be it. 
um, because I felt excited and I felt invigorated by this chance. And it reminded me of the last time that I remembered truly being happy in a profession, which was when I was in grad school and I was working in the women's studies department and I was teaching and I was training and I was, um, you know, helping others in something that I felt passionate about. And I was like, this has got to be it. And then it wasn't it. I got a form letter that basically said, oh that man, <laughs> they had suspended the search. Um, and so what was interesting though, in that moment was instead of feeling devastated and crushed, I felt relieved and I mm. couldn't explain it then that I felt relieved, but it was like, huh, I was more curious about it versus feeling like it was one other thing that had me kind of like yeah. squashed on the ground level. Um, yeah. and so I was like, all right, interesting. And so I was like, you know what, I'm not going to apply anywhere else. I just had this internal knowing that I finally listened to. Um, and I said, you know what, the traditional, traditional job market isn't for me. This has not worked at all. Like mm -hmm. I graduated with my MFA in 2010 and I had jobbed hump, jobbed, job jumped, um, from 2010 to 2018 always getting to a certain point where I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't satisfied. I was undervalued, but overworked. And I was just like, I don't get it. This is just not what I'm cut out for. I was meant to do something else. I was meant to do more. I was meant to do greater. And I am not getting to any of those places in any of these traditional places that I've been employed in. And so I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, whatever, I have a paycheck. I know how to pull the red wagon now. I know how to schlep the seltzer. Um, I'll just keep doing that. Get a paycheck, get my benefits taken care of, take care of my son until I know what the universe has in store and, and just wait for the sign. And so I was like, all right, well, while I'm clocking in and clocking out, doing hardly anything now, because I've basically been demoted from the lowest possible <laughs> position without being fired, I was like, I guess I'm going <laughs> to listen to podcasts and I'm going to read self-help books and I'm, and I'm going to like, just keep putting out vibrational energy into the universe saying like, okay, you knocked all this shit down. Like mm -hmm. now what? <laughs> like, give me a freaking sign. Um, and those signs came in a variety of ways. And the first sign that came was a conversation with my writing coach, who you know um, and adore, Paula. And I was telling Paula about what was going on. And she was like, you should be a VA. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. What the hell is a VA? And she was like, well, it's a virtual assistant. And I was like, I don't like the word assistant. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. done with assistant. If assistant <laughs> comes with any of these, it was like, okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Um, she uh -huh. was like, number one, it's virtual. So there is no pizza and red flyer wagons and like, other <laughs> um, but she was like, no, you can pick the skills that you want to offer. And like, you've done some work for me. I know that what you're capable of from this writing organization that we've been a part of together, like you can do this, like in your sleep, you just don't realize that you can do this. And mm -hmm. she was like, I know the exact person that you need to connect with. And so she gave me your name. I got in touch with you on LinkedIn. Um, I signed up for the five-day challenge and I literally did the five-day challenge sitting at that freaking desk in the front, <laughs> receiving packages gracefully, the smile on my face, getting up occasionally <laughs> to make another pot of coffee, stocking some <laughs> seltzer, like, oh, well, I've got my earbuds in hoping for a brighter future. <laughs> Good for you. Um, and so the five day challenge led to that conversation in the coffee shop where we, where we began this delightful retelling of um, my days prior mm -hmm. to VA life. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. You know, so Allie, you have, I, I, you have in confidence, it was the, it was a selling point. Yeah. I, w I just want you to know, and I, and I think you do know this about yourself now, but that took incredible strength to do what you did to say, you know what, I'm not applying anywhere else anymore. This, this traditional work is not right for me. And I'm going to listen to the universe because once you did that, it really did open up for you, didn't it? Oh and most God, people, <laughs> most people aren't willing to do that. Most people settle forever. Yeah. You didn't. I couldn't. And that's, that's scary. It, well, it was terrifying. Yeah. 
Yeah. But you did it. You faced those fears and you were courageous and it just, it's just so who you are. I love that about you. Thank you. And I feel uh, in a way, and you probably don't feel this way, but I feel in a way, sorry for those people who had you and could have really gotten so much value from you and couldn't even look outside whatever friggin' box they had you in to yeah. see what you could do. So before we go further, I just want to give you a chance to tell people about your book because all this universe stuff resulted in your first published book, yeah. right? Can you yeah. talk about that? Yeah. So, um, oh gosh. Well, actually really the starting point of the book was going to your live event um, in April of 2019, which was literally two weeks after I walked out of that day job. Um, after I posted an eight and a half by 11 sign on the bulletin board with me as my bitmoji, you know, the little like iconic clip art figures of yourself or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, Uh um, it basically said to the effect of it's been real, it's been fun, but it hasn't been real fun. And then had these, <laughs> had these bitmojis that were like, see ya, um, all over the bottom of them. And I like posted it and then I walked out. <laughs> Is that how you gave your notice? Um, I gave my notice in a more professional way, but, <laughs> but <laughs> for months I had been like, what am I going to do for my big exit? Like I was like, I would, I was conceiving of all these really fun ideas. And so at one point I was like, I'm going to get like a fake mic, like a blow up mic. And then on my way out, drop it and then just keep walking, leave the mic inside. Um, Uh I had the idea of like blaring music and like dancing my way out of the door. Um, (laughs) But then I was like, maybe I, maybe I don't want to burn all the bridges. And so I went with just a kind of tongue in cheek um, sign on the bulletin Mm -hmm. board and, and Mm -hmm. took off. But, um, but yeah, I went to, I went to your live two weeks, uh, af, or maybe even less than that after I gave, after I was there my last day and mm-hmm. I was there and I was listening to parts of your personal story and parts of one of the other speakers, personal stories. It hit me like a ton of bricks, um, that what I was meant to do was to use my power with words to help other women tell their stories. And, mm. um, it didn't necessarily mean that those other women were bad writers. It just meant that they had a story to tell. And for whatever reason, they didn't want to be the one to actually write it. And that could be that they didn't right. have the time there. They didn't have the skill, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but something was irking me about that idea. And what was irking me was that how was I going to show or illustrate to potential women clients that I could do this for them if I hadn't done it for myself. <laughs> mm. And I was like, Oh shit, I guess I better. <laughs> I guess I better go for it and do, do this for me and honor my own experiences and my own journey in order to make other people, people feel safe to be vulnerable in sharing theirs with me to then write it. And, Mm -hmm. um, and so I was mulling that over and mulling it over and I was going, gosh, you know, I've, I've wanted to be a writer my entire life. I've wanted to publish a book since I was five. Um, it's time to just do it like forget this whole, like you have to publish traditionally thing. You have to have an agent, just freaking do it. Like the internet self-publishing, there's like so many ways to do this, like just do it and do it for yourself and like get it out there. And so, um, again, it was like, I put that, that vibrational energy, I think out into the cosmos and, um, woke up one morning with this vision of a black and white composition notebook as the cover and the words, dear universe. And I was like, Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what I'm supposed <laughs> to do with that. Um, and over, over the period of the next few weeks, it was like, this idea was like just percolating back here. And I was like, I don't know what it wants to be. It wants to be something, but I just don't know where it's going yet. And so I went to another women's event, networking event, and there was a speaker there. And she basically said something to the effect of um, the universe doesn't do things to us. It, do- it does things for us. And boom, like lightning. I was like, that's it. Dear universe, I get it now. All this, all this crap, all of this hardship, all this adversity, all this challenge, all of these things that have been put in my way that have felt like barriers these entire time or bullshit have actually been gifts and lessons. 
They've, it's actually been you trying to steer me along a path this entire time. But because I kept pushing up on you, I just kept going the wrong way and more crap kept happening until again, we got to that tablecloth moment of, all right, now do you get it? Hello, pay attention. Um, <laughs> and so dear universe, Surprise. Yeah, um, became, became basically a compilation of letters to the universe about some of the more profound moments in my life um, that have kind of all led up to this moment where I finally said, all right, I trust you. I trust myself. I was born to be a writer. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to go do it. Um, and so, uh, you know, as you know, the book ends um, with me basically going to that conference, that live event that you had and getting this idea to write this book. Um, so it's, it's this, it's all, it's all the things. It's letters to the universe about life's journey. It's my love letter to writing. Um, it's, it's an illustration of what I can do for clients. It's this beautiful, um, it's this beautiful product of everything in my heart that I want for myself and I want for everybody else. Yeah. It's a wonderful book. It is available on Amazon. Where else can they get it? Um, they can order on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, the Kindle version I think is actually on Apple books. And um, they can buy it through my, my site directly, aybirthium.com backslash dear universe. Uh, and then a lot of the local independent bookstores can get it if you go through Bookshop, I think. Um, so it's, it's widely available. And we'll put links to all those places in the show notes so that anybody can grab that book that wants to because it is a fabulous read really fast read. It is so entertaining. It makes you laugh and cry and feel all the feels, which I love. <laughs> I love you called it a warm cookie, I think. <laughs> yes. Reviews, it, which I adore. It's like, <laughs> sit, it's like sitting down and having hot cocoa and a warm cookie. And it makes you feel like you're hugged from the inside out. Oh, I hope so. It's really, really good. So, um, Tell us about how it's been to be a virtual assistant and virtual expert and what the title is you call yourself now and all of those things. Talk about what you do for people, anywhere you want to go with that. So um, for a while, I was saying virtual assistant um, for a hot second, virtual expert, and then very quickly, um, it became copywriter or content writer and eventually ghostwriter. So there's been a uh, evolution, I would say, based on clientele, based on confidence, based on skill level. So, you know, in the beginning, like just starting out of the gate, um, not having a lot of built up confidence yet because I didn't have a lot of clients and have a lot of experience. Um, and I was kind of writing all the things just to get, just to earn some money so I could finally leave the day job. I was definitely leaning very heavily on the virtual assistant, um, kind of terminology and even, um, kind of like the pricing kind of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, matrix for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. And pretty quickly though, I realized that my skill in writing was so strong that, I was being sought after very, very quickly. And so I was constantly filling up or having to, you know, say no to people, um, which indicated that I was, I was charging too low. So I was That's very right. quickly having to charge more, um, which was right. nerve wracking oh. in the beginning. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> oh, darn. I have to raise my price again. <laughs> um, and I was like, how is this possible? I can't possibly be making more hourly now than when I was pulling the wagon for myself in such a few, <laughs> in such little time, you know, like all of a sudden it was like, I don't get it. Why would anybody be working for someone else <laughs> when you can make more for yourself way faster? Um, I mean, that's, that's just like revenue. It doesn't take into consideration expenses and things, but still I was like, oh my God, it's true. What I, yeah. made, I just like surpassed <laughs> like, very quickly. Allie, it's because they're afraid. And that's why I wanted to compliment you on being able to have your courage to do that because they're afraid. Yeah. Oh, and fear will do. So yeah. I mean, I think about yeah. how, you know, people for years said, well, why don't you freelance? Right. And I was like, I'm not good enough to freelance. Right. Or, well, <laughs> then there's no security. You know, I don't get like, mm -hmm. you know, clear my, and now I'm like, I am never going back. I never went back. You know, go get your own damn pizza. Um, so, 
<laughs> anywhere. I don't care. Even if you're not making me do pizza, I'm never going back to working for anybody else. Um, but you know, so clients kept, kept coming up, prices had to keep getting raised. Um, so those things happened really, really quickly. But then the, but then the other thing that, that happened was that it was kind of like, all right, I need to narrow down what I do because when you're the catch all for everything, you know, oh, well, I'll write this kind of copy and I'll write that kind of copy and I'll write that kind of copy. Um, number one, it sets you up to be scattered and con like confused <laughs> about what you're trying to deliver because you're doing all the things. It doesn't help you narrow down who you're trying to serve because you're doing all the things. Um, and you very quickly fall out of alignment with your own joy because you're doing all of the things. Um, that being said, I wouldn't change anything about the way that I approached it because I also couldn't know what I enjoyed without trying a whole bunch of stuff on, right? Just like when without you finding out what you didn't enjoy. Yeah. Like you go dress shopping yeah. and you're like, well, that looks really crappy on the rack, but I'm going to try it on anyway, because maybe it'll look better on. And sometimes yeah, because those true. things, that's right. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you're like, no, <laughs> that should just stay on the rack. Polka <laughs> dots are not really my thing. Um, so, you know, it was a lot of trial and error, but I don't regret any of that experience. So bit by bit, it was like, nope, I don't want to offer that. Nope. I don't want to offer that. Nope. I don't want to offer that. Oh, I'm feeling really good about this. You know, oh, that's not really my person, but this is my person. Um, and like really just constantly dialing it in. And every time there was like a new dialing it in, it seemed like either price or title you know, kind of shifted and changed based on what I was learning next, but it was a really fast evolution. I was like, I've only been in this now a full two years. And the amount of change I've had in two years has been astronomical. Um, because it's just like the momentum, as you said earlier, like the universe opened this up and then it was like, whoosh, like, it must be where you're supposed to be. because stuff is <laughs> flying. Um, and so now, you know, uh, this year I'm, I'm doubling down on the ghostwriting and I'm taking copywriting out of my language. Um, I'm taking content writing out of my language and just trying to get really clear and really focused on who I want to work with, what I want to be offering. Um, but yeah, it's been a process. It's been a process. It's been a journey like anything else. Uh, and it's been a lot of listening intuitively and continuing to make scary and brave choices. Um, for the sake of aligning with myself and my purpose over um, security, financials, you know, sure money kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, ghostwriting is your niche now. And yeah. what type of people would you most like to write for? Because I know there are people right now listening going, oh, a book. I would love to have a book written for me. Yeah. So um, I think I really, really, really want to help women um, get their voices heard. I still think that women's voices are, are marginalized in the greater dialogues across all kinds of industries and sectors. Um, I also think that women have unique experiences that often motivate, inspire, um, or direct where they head. So I don't really want to necessarily always write a business book for a client um, unless there is some portion of personal narrative or story that's involved in that because story, I think, is what hooks people. Story is what keeps people interested um, when you're still trying to deliver very factual kind of nonfiction-based, you know, business information. Um, memoir, I think for women is important because other women need to know that they're not alone. And there's so many things that women experience that we don't talk about that if we did talk about it, it would normalize it so that we could all be together in it and we can maybe make some change around it. So um, I really wanna work with women who are in the coaching space, um, women who might be creatives, but maybe not writers. So they have a really powerful story that they wanna tell. Um, but their medium is clay or painting or music and not necessarily writing, but like that story needs to be heard. Um, and pretty much any badass uh, female boss <laughs> or entrepreneur who has a mission that they're like really, really, really just striving to get. And if I can believe in that mission, I can believe in that woman and I can work with them. Um, 
I don't want to work in the financial space. I don't want to write stories of science. Um, like, so there, are, there are you could, things. but you choose I, not I to. Choose not to. <laughs> um, I choose not to. Uh, so yeah, so coaches, entrepreneurs, um, creatives, but I definitely think women um, and women of all all kinds. I I don't I don't want to just write for white women. Um, I don't want to just write for women who are in my age group. Uh, not that people in my age group might be necessarily where they need to be financially to be hiring a ghostwriter, but, um, I love to get to know women, um, f- from all, all kind of directions of life, um, cultural backgrounds, religions, um, sexual orientations, races. Like I just, I really believe in a global sisterhood and, um, you know, would feel honored and, and, and humbled to be given the privilege to write any, any woman's uh, story of grit, hope, or resiliency. Well, um, here's the book that Allie wrote for me. <laughs> it just got published January of 2021. It's called Leaving the Grind Behind, a startup guide for the emerging virtual assistant. And I can tell you that I knew I needed to have a book out there. I wanted to have a book out there. I'm not a great writer, nor did I have a desire to write. I like to talk. (laughs) (laughs) And I really didn't even have an idea what a book would be about. And that is the brilliance, the many, many, many faceted brilliance of you, Allie, because you had a conversation with me and you came back to me after that conversation and you said, I have an idea you could do a series of books. Here's what I envision for you. And I listened and I thought, I have struck gold. (laughs) This woman is not only a great writer, she is a brilliant strategist. She really understands me. She can write in my words and that, you know, black women, transgender women, no matter what it is, I believe you can write in their words. I think you have that ability. And I apologize. We got to, I'm going to pause for a second here. Sorry about that. So um, I didn't even know what I wanted. You came in with this great strategy idea. And I just said, yes, sign me up. And away you went and you interviewed me a couple of different times. And Allie, I don't even know how you pulled it off. I don't know how you did all this, but it is an amazing book. I'm incredibly proud of it. It does sound like me. It sounds like here's how I talk about how Allie writes for me. Um, and and anybody that you write for. You make me the better version of me. You take all of those things that I wish I could say right, that I wish I could write correctly, and you do that. And I'm like, that's what I always wanted to say. (laughs) (laughs) So there's there's a few things, though, that make, that make, uh, so there's a few things that make that book for you specifically successful and why it worked. And then there's a couple of things that I bring to the table, no matter who I work with, that I think is what makes any project almost successful when they they work with me. Um, So with you and your book specifically, you know, we have a very high trust relationship. And honestly, that is, that is where my client relationships have been the most powerful, the strongest and the longest um, has been when my client has entrusted me to guide or direct or take leadership of a particular project Um, because they trust that I am paying attention to the brand. I'm paying attention to their voice. I'm paying attention to their larger mission and vision. I'm paying attention to why does this book matter to the business or to the next step for, for this particular person. Right. And so um, I think, you know, we do have that high trust, 
you know, relationship. And so you were able to say, I want a book. Here are some thoughts. What do you think? And that gave me a lot of ability and space for me to do what I do best, which is create. Right. And so I was able to bring my best self forward because you gave me the space to do that. So that was, that was the first thing. The second thing that made this book in particular, very, very successful is that you have been delivering this exact content that's featured in the book all over the damn place for years. Okay. So, um, I being somebody who, who went through the program, right. I know how you train. I know the material from my own experience, but you've also got a YouTube channel. You've got blog posts, you have articles, you've been on podcasts. There is so much freaking content to go and use as research, as, you know, a comparison against, is this tone correct? Um, to look at for accuracy. Did I quote this the right way? Did I um, put the right dollar sign in here for the amount that, you know, an average VA makes, you know, or whatever. Um, So there was already so much rich research pretty much already available to me. It made that, it made that first book of, of, of ours um, very easy to write and to put together because of all the incredible content you've already created. Right. Um, now, when it comes to other people's kind of work and projects, you know, obviously I mentioned a couple of things, right? Like if you've already got a lot of content that helps, if it's a high trust relationship that helps, but a couple of my superpowers that I bring to the table, um, one, I'm really good at hearing all of the rambling, I'll say, and <laughs> going right in between and going, wait a minute, is this it? Right. Because, (laughs) because what happens with clients, especially, especially people with businesses of their own and they're wearing lots of hats, no matter how many subcontractors employees they have, right. They've got their, their eye on 1500 balls. What's happening with marketing, what's happening with sales, what's happening with customers, what's happening with products, you know, they're all over the place. And so they'll sit down to try to talk about what they want, a message or a story or an email or whatever it is to be. And they'll be like, well, I'm thinking something like this, but maybe it's really that. And then, well, it could be this other thing, you know, you know, actually, I don't know. How about you just make it up? And (laughs) that was me. That was absolutely me. and, And if I know the client and the business and all that stuff enough, then I probably can make it up. But a lot of the time, what they don't realize, what the client doesn't realize when they're kind of going through the spaghetti (laughs) and it's just like, here's a noodle and there's a noodle and here's another noodle, um, (laughs) is that they're actually saying something that's consistent across all those ideas. They just can't hear it themselves. And so Mm -hmm. I become the person who's like, okay, time out. What I heard in all of that was this, right? And then I put all the spaghetti on one plate and I arrange it really nicely and I put a couple of meatballs on and I go, is this it? Mm-hmm. And I went, yes. Oh and my people God. go, oh yes, thank, yes, thank God. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You arranged my spaghetti so nice and neat and you actually made it seem like something legit. Um, so that's like one superpower and I call it, I call it hearing between the lines. Mm, I love that zeroing in on what exactly it is that you're saying, even if you don't think that you're, you're organized and what it is that you're trying to tell me. And I definitely wasn't. Uh, And you did here in between the lines. Definitely one superpower. The second superpower is um, really, really, really paying attention to the person. Who are you? What are you about? Where can I find you online? What can I read that you've already written? Where can I listen to you that you've already said? All of that is like my, like doing PI work (laughs) on on the client because my aim is to, is to become them, right. To embody their spirit, their essence, their business, whatever it is. So that when it's on the page, it looks, sounds like them, right? Like, well, if it looks like a duck, sounds like a duck, it must be a duck, right? We want everybody to think that I'm the duck, you know, that we don't need my name to be on it. If they see that it's an email from Kathy, they feel that it really is from Kathy. If they see that it's an email from Alice or Jen or Susie or whoever, right? Um, they believe that it's actually coming from them because it sounds and looks so much like them that they don't know any difference and they don't need to know any difference, right? Um, and so that's kind of the second, that's the second superpower. And so just circling back around to a point you made earlier about, um, you know, that you believe that I could write for a great number of people, regardless if, you know, our races are the same or our sexual orientations are the same or our religions are the same or whatever. Um, you know, I think that's because of those two, those two things. I'm, I'm committed to hearing 
you know, what is actually trying to be said, but I'm also committed to seeing and understanding the other person that's sitting across from me. The only exceptions that I have, people that I will not write for, I will not write for people who are um, misaligned with my values or world perspectives. Um, it just is not gonna happen. So I'm not gonna write for people with hate in their heart or intolerance for other people. I'm just not. Good for you. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't that be horrible to try to write something like that? That could crush your soul. The only way that I would do it would be if it was fiction and there was like a, Mm. you know, like a a character, you know, that was specifically supposed to be villainous, right? For the whole point and whatever. Or if there was a person like that in somebody's personal story. Um, But I am not going, I'm not going to write for somebody who they themselves is, you know, um, a racist or a bigot or, um, you're going to have to go find a different ghostwriter. <laughs> <laughs> this ghostwriter's got class. Okay. So just... you ain't, you ain't dragging any more little red flyer wagons. <laughs> no more red wagons over here. You can go get your own damn pizza and seltzer. Um, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So for example, um, when you and I talked, you said, I actually can envision a series of books and I could see you doing one a year for three years or longer. And I'm like, yes, I'm in. <laughs> so this was book one that just came out this year. And we will be meeting, Allie and I will be meeting later this month to get started on book two, which really will mean I'll ramble and she'll pick out that. Uh, she'll, she'll do her superpowers and figure out what that next book's going to be. And then. I also love, Allie, that you and your team can then run with the entire process of the book. I don't have to like step in and do anything. Right. Like, you know, to get it published, you do the the editing, the proof, your team, the editing, the proofing, the the creation of the beautiful covers and the blurbs and all that on the back covers and look at my picture on the back cover and and it's beautifully formatted and um, then self-published and all of that. You do all of that. It was a work of art, I have to say. Um, it was a lot of moving parts and pieces. It was a lot of people. Um, and it, but again, you know, high trust environment. I, you know, uh, I didn't necessarily know when we began all of the ins and outs of like Amazon Kindle's publishing platform, right? I, I had to rely on a team member who had done it before. I didn't know about the, um, you know, the specifications of the interior layout and design. Like I know about interior layout and design of a book. I'm an avid reader. I went through the process with my own book, but I went about it in a different way. And I, again, I relied on somebody else to take care of the interior layout and design of my own book. Um, and so there was, there was a lot of high trust environment kind of like, all right, all right, team, team member A or team member B, like, you know, this is your lane. Um, I'm entrusting, I'm entrusting you with this piece of, of this project. And, um, and I was just very clear at the very beginning, like, uh, this will be as perfect as we can get it. Like mistakes might happen, but we're, we're aiming for, we're aiming for like the highest, highest caliber, highest mark mm-hmm. that we can. Um, and I let everybody know that that was kind of the standard and expectation that we were shooting for and everybody brought their A game. So it was a really amazing product. <clears throat> so here's how perfect this is. Uh, <laughs> and believe me, if I, I would never have actually gotten it done on my own. Let's just admit it. It wouldn't have ever happened. <laughs> but if it had <laughs> by some miracle, there would have been so many typos. I can't even do a PowerPoint presentation without multiple typos. <laughs> Am I right that there was one typo found in here and it was that two words were together. There wasn't a space in it. That yeah. was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and like, with writing, <laughs> oh my gosh, with writing, it's the craziest thing because um, you can, you can just make yourself crazy with reading and rereading and trying to find every little thing. And so um, I actually ended up like <laughs> expending a lot more money during the final editing stage of my own book, because every time I got a new e-proof, I found something else and I can't even tell you how many rounds I went through. And I must've been driving my interior designer crazy (laughs) because every time I found something that was wrong in the e-proof, she'd have to go and then fix it in multiple files, the ebook version and the, and the paperback version. And Uh, eventually like I ended up having to pay her just an arm and a leg 
um, for all of the, the rounds of revisions. And then eventually my publishing manager at Onion River Press came back and she was like, so I didn't realize that there's only so many ebook revisions before you have to start paying for them. So mm. I didn't tell you that. So we're not going to charge you for that one. But like, I need you to know, because like, how many more times are you going to go back and look at it and <laughs> keep wanting to fix it? And so finally I was like, okay, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. But I was like, so anxious about there being <laughs> typos. Um, because I was like, the thing about self-publishing, this is still a disadvantage, I think, um, in, in the publishing world, which is that when people, people realize immediately that something is self-published, they start to discredit it immediately. Um, they have the ability to do that if it's a poorly put together product, right? If it's a poorly right. put together product and automatically looks like it's been self-published in the kind That's of right. like, oh, I whipped it up in an afternoon and hit print kind of capacity. Mm -hmm then it gets discredited regardless of the material inside it. So then mm -hmm. what happens is you have a reader who starts to go, oh, okay, well, I guess since I bought it, I'm going to continue to read it. But now they're going to nitpick the shit out of it um, because right. the, the presentation of it has already been, it's already brought your perspective way down here. And right. so I was like adamant about my book and yours because I've worked on them the exact same year, which is just crazy. Um, that, <laughs> that like, it, they will be perfect. Right. Because the, I wanted people to pick them up and go, I love this book. I wonder who, right. And show your book, show oh, your book. Yeah. Um, so there's Allie's book, you know, Gorgeous. I wanted people to pick them up and be like, not looking and going, Oh, this, this had to have been self-published. Right. I right. wanted them to pick them up and go, I can't wait to dive in. It's professional. It's polished. It looks nice. It feels nice. Oh, and all the shit inside is really meaningful. I didn't want people yeah. to get hung up by errors and mistakes. Um, Mine feels fabulous. Oh, good. It really does. It is just, it's, it's, I don't know. It's I'm still waiting wonderful. for my copy to get here. <laughs> I'm like, come on, Amazon. Come on. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. I'm going to actually send you uh, a, a signed copy. I just got all mine. Oh, good. I just got them. Oh, good. So good, good. you'll be getting a signed copy from me. Um, and, and you guys, um, just in case you're wondering, uh, I did have the conversation with Allie of, I mean, you wrote this entire book. Shouldn't we put you, your name on here? And she's like, no, I'm the ghostwriter. So I was like, okay, cool. But I still tell everybody, because you know me, I got a big mouth. I got to talk. Um, <laughs> Somebody wrote to me recently and said, you must be the most visible ghostwriter I've ever seen. <laughs> Well, I don't think that's always going to be the case. I think that's just going to be the case. No. <laughs> yeah, because I just, you know, I'm, I'm an open book. I tell it all, even if you don't want to hear it. So. <laughs> um, so long story short, the first proof that I got of my book in, in full for, <laughs> format, I started to read. And within the first quarter of the book, I found a typo. Oh, wow. And I was like, no, <laughs> all, all that effort. And so when it came to your book, um, I was like, oh, I'm going to double check. I'm going to triple check. I don't care how many rounds of review I have to go through. I'm going to go through thousands of rounds of reviews if I have to. <laughs> um, was mm. probably driving that interior design person crazy <laughs> with every, you know, um, and still uh -huh. we ended up getting dinged on Amazon's quality assurance, right? For those two words being smashed together without the That was it. How can that be a ding? I was like, I was like damn it. that, <laughs> Allie, that is the that is the least typo I've ever had in anything that has gone out from my business. <laughs> it just goes to show that like your, your job as a writer is never done. You could always That's keep right. find new mistakes. Um, but That's right. you know, at some point, and I can tell you that, um, having the book out, you know, I felt that and you felt <clears throat> and my coach felt that it would, uh, help me become even more the leader in my industry. And I can see it already happening. People who, people who've never heard of me are buying it. Um, people I've never heard of are letting me know, Hey, I bought your book. I'm like, Oh, wow. How'd you even know I had a book? I don't know. Um, but I'm glad they did. Yeah. So um, if anybody's listening to this and you've been thinking about putting a book out because you want to really be known as the leader in your industry, it really works. And if you're like me and you not only don't have this, maybe you have the skill, but you don't have the time. I had neither. I didn't have the desire. <clears throat> Allie is um, who you want to check in with. So Allie, for those people listening to this now, and they're like, oh my gosh, I need to, 
I need to contact Allie. I really want to have a conversation with her to find out if she will write a book for me. How do they get in touch with you? Um, so if they want to message directly, they can send an email to Allie, A-L-L-Y at T-W-P-R-T dot com um, because it's way shorter than saying the right place, right time. <laughs> so <laughs> Allie at T-W-P-R-T dot com or um, I'm pretty much on all the social. I'm even on Twitter now. Um, that's my team's fault, but I'm even on Twitter now, um, <laughs> Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, all the places really. So, uh, I would love for people to follow, like those pages. Um, they can direct message through any of those channels that they really want. Like I'm pretty good about, um, checking and responding pretty quickly. Um, so I would be happy to receive any and all connections, messages, um, please help me. And, um, and even like, if you want to toss in, if people wanted to toss in a little bit about the story that they're thinking about working on into that message, I'm, I am hot for a good, a good story. Um, no matter <laughs> when it gets delivered and it's definitely an awesome, it's an awesome pick me up, uh, kind of line. Um, so yeah, send it all. Tell me everything. <laughs> and we'll put links to all of that information in our show notes so that you can go there and find out uh, more about working with Allie. Allie, thank you so much for spending this time with me today. You're such a great storyteller. This was awesome. Thank you for having me. It was great. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm-hmm.